God bless you. Let's walk and ponder and pray. For there is much coming to pass these days. Spiritual warfare is on the increase. You may see strange happenings in your own lives and more people giving you more turmoil and more struggle, more woe and more strife. Those that call themselves Christian, but their deeds are the complete opposite thereof. You may see mocking and scoffing even in the church. I am not known for my tolerance. Never have I been and never will I be. For if one wishes to mock God and call themselves Christian, their tongue should be silenced for such blasphemy. When you know better, you do better. So there is no excuse. This is a narrow path indeed. I'm seeing more and more of those that reject God and put themselves above him. This is a concern, especially when they wear the badge that says Christian. Now, as we carry on, we warn, we show them the error with scripture, but it's up to them if they listen and it's up to them if they take heed. Because every idle thing that we've ever spoken, whether good or evil, is written down in the books and we each have a book. And idle tongues can start fires just as easy as put them out and everything is written. And those books will be opened in the end. Sometimes you truly must think before you speak. There's no time for blasphemy. If you know better, do better. Remember, blasphemy against God is one thing, but against the Holy Spirit is quite another. There is that which is the unforgivable. So take heed of what you say before you say it. There is a narrow path and a hard path to walk. A person has their choice on what path they wish. You can come this way and go upon a wide path and though it be easy, there's only one place it leads to and that is destruction. Everything wiped away. And that's the thing. The wide path does not bring joy and it doesn't bring peace. The fruits of the Spirit are there to guide and lead you into all truth. But the Holy Spirit works in you and through you. Oh, pray and repent. Seek God's guidance in all things. Do not be conformed unto sin. When you see the error, don't let your heart become more hardened and more accepting of it so that you stay in it. But confess it to God and repent for it and get back on the narrow path. It's the only way. Because there is a great falling away coming. And it's going to become more tempting in these days to come. There's great wickedness ahead. I've seen strange things and dark dreams. There is much wickedness ahead. And those that believe in Christ, those that put Jesus first, they won't conform to this wickedness. For though that path be nice and wide, it doesn't go any way good. But this path ends it goes on forever for it leads to eternal life so stay on it jesus is waiting for everyone here though you have tribulation be of good cheer for jesus overcame the world 
they're readying everyone for this mark in this dream I saw everything was in darkness but everything was open to the people in this darkness and I was with this group of people I knew not and it was supposed to be the most happening place for all to go everyone wanted to be there and it was every foul thing you can imagine it was the big VIP club of all darkness think the scene when the hunchback in 300 comes to the king to kneel and all the foulness going on they are given every foul to base thing if they kneel those that take the mark and they're all lining up to get in the club and all they got to do is wave a hand and a little red dot would appear it would scan it so they would just go in and as I was walking with these people in the dark I was like what is this place and I knew I did not have it for I would not and one of the group went do not worry he is with us so I ended up in this dark place and every time I tried to speak about God all these other people would try and gravitate around me to stop me talking every time and then in a flash of darkness I saw that they were penguin cucumbers mango pineapples they were not as you would think they would be you understand the alphabeti spaghetti the pride the flag full of six colors and not seven a fake rainbow yeah there's much darkness coming and then I was upon a town and all little independent shops country town and every shop was closed and desolate and everywhere was flooded and the wind blew against the broken shops and people walked crestfallen through the flooded land but as I walked I was like, why is there no water around my feet? Why is everything dry where I walk? But all I see everywhere around me is this flood. And everything was desolate. You couldn't buy or sell, so everything closed and died. These places that didn't conform to having to have a certain mark, they didn't continue. And in that dark place, they said, with this, all avenues are open to you here there was nothing cut off from those in the dark but they do not realize it leads to destruction in that darkness it was all depravity lies for truth before i'd had these dreams i had been walking and the sky had been so bizarre in front of me I could see light in the distance but above there was dark clouds and behind me dark clouds to the right of me a red sky traversing in but on the left the sky was as fire with rolling clouds as if all was burning but if I looked directly above my own head the sky was blue pure blue yet every direction I looked in it was something else all around was these black clouds jet black they were around me as I walked and there was people outside their homes and they were looking up at the sky taking pictures and there was a couple of uh, mango pineapples you know what I'm talking about and they were out and they had their phone and they were taking pictures and they said and they spoke of a double rainbow so I stopped and I looked up and all I saw was black clouds and I was like, there's no rainbow there. What are they seeing? And I was in prayer on this walk at the time when all this occurred. And in the distance, I saw this jet black flag waving in the wind. Now, I've never seen a flag in this spot before for I knew this particular walk well, but it is a daily walk for me. 
Now, as I was there, I had this terrible feeling of something bad was coming. And I couldn't be sure on it. For I knew not what it meant, but I knew something terrible was to come to pass. Something was to happen. And then I came home. And I did some research and some study, some prayer. I'd gone to bed and I had those dreams. And because of these things I saw, I found information then saying that an old, creepy, sleepy man that likes to sniff children had put in an executive order making law in regards to changing little ones. Laws to make sure schools taught falsehood, lies for truth, that they're working ever so tirelessly to bring in this falsehood, trying to make sure schools teach that a man can be pregnant and have a period. And God made them man and woman, him and her. This world is getting desperately wicked. And they do not care. And there is a war coming. There is great peril upon the earth, but no one sees it nor cares. People want to be changed. I see people saying they can't wait to get a chip. Saying they can't wait to be integrated with technology. And the delight on their face when they tell me. Some words fall on deaf ears. But we keep preaching and we keep warning all the same. Here's a hard path. There's much to come. And that's why we must stand steadfast. And that's why we must stand prepared. And we must focus on Jesus Christ. Learn from him and remember Acts 5.29 We are to obey God, not men. Anything that tries to lead us to come unto sin, certainly not. God first and foremost, no matter the consequence. Oh, count it all joy when you come through perils and hardships. Same as jobs, trying to make it that a person can no longer just clock in like they used to. Trying to make everything about integrating technology. Because there's going to be a time when the technology will be so inconvenient that they're going to convince everyone that they need to be integrated with technology themselves. And then from that, only a person with a certain something in them can scan to get in to do their job but that wide path leads to destruction what a waste when one has perished and no longer fit for purpose it is thrown on the dung heap and left to burn God is calling his people back to him like prodigal sons it's time to turn back Recognize sin, recognize the wickedness of the world. If you don't know sin, go read Exodus chapter 21 to 17. And then go and learn the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapters 5 to 7. Ah, my heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, learn the Bible and follow it. Listen to Jesus. Those that love him will obey his commands. And he makes this perfectly clear in John 14. But how many want to listen and know that? They wish to just say, well, I've been a Christian all my life. But where are the fruits? And you say, you know, not the spirit. I say again, where are the fruits? I'm not talking about the gifts, but the fruits. Oh, I tell people, seek God while he may be found. Repent, confess all, and turn from all wretchedness. 
God resists the proud. So do not be pridely in your previous lives. Do not be stoutly on them. Going, oh, well, rare tear, tear, I'm this and that, and I've done this and that. Don't count for nothing. Don't count for nothing at all, because there's always someone bigger. And I tell you, there's no one bigger nor greater than God. We are to be as faithful servants, doing as we ought. This isn't a service where it's, oh, well, I, I, I provide a service for people, I should get paid. That's the Copelands of the world, hungry for their money. And certainly they have their reward on this earth, but not in the kingdom. And there is many an ear tickler out there also. We are to obey God, to fear God and keep the commandments, for that is man's all. Because every deed we've ever done, every secret thing, comes unto judgment, whether good or evil. People, it's time to stop. It's time to recognize the errors. We all fall short, but we seek God to work in us, to help us with those things we know we fall short, and not as an excuse so we can continue falling short. There needs to be change, the fruits working in the person. And this will be the sign that you love one another, as I have loved you. Let Jesus' love work in you and through you. Love your fellow brothers and sisters as yourselves. Warn them of all wretchedness and wickedness. And pray for the lost that they come unto repentance. Pray for those in powers of position and authority. For if they do not hearken and do not come to God, there is but destruction. And I tell you, if they do not heed, your prayers are heaping hot coals upon their very heads, for their day of judgment will come. We see the evil that's being done against those in position. And they are unrepentant of their wickedness, or their murders, nor their poisons. Their pharmacia is evident, and they continue with it. And they are fear-mongering, one and all, and I tell you now, while I'm still able, much information is starting to disappear. Articles that used to be there are now gone. There is a lot of information I used to be able to share here that I cannot. It is gone. The engines that search don't search as much as they used to. Everything is coming under complete control. All these things are getting harder now. But in the end times, knowledge will abound. So I tell you, seek the word of God. Follow him. Trust in him. And pray and seek him to guide you and lead you and teach you. For it is the Holy Spirit that leads into all truth. For God is not a God of confusion. We are to be faithful servants, soldiers in Christ. And a soldier does not have time for willy-nilliness. As a soldier, we don't go off into the world if you know something's of the dark. Have no part of it, instead expose it. You know what they show in the cinema. You know what they show in the concert. You know the people that perform in those things you watch and listen. So I tell you, take no part of them. Oh, pray for them, but take no part of them that they may see their error. Because the rich, the poor, the great and the small are all forced, or should I say coerced, far better word, to take a certain something. And you're start starting to see those that were coerced into taking a certain something and the effects it's having on many. What about those that can no longer hear the word of God since having a certain something? We know they put something in the certain something because the information should still be there. 
the wickedness of this world still continues. We are watching every foul corruption be made as normality. Riots are good in this world. If your complexion is fair, you are hated. If you happen to be a penguin, cucumber or a mango pineapple, the government will go out of its way to give you extra help. This is to coerce. Those in desperate need of help will be coerced into going into depravity for the help that they actually needed. This is why the early church needs to stand up and rise again. We need to be helping one another in all love, in all kindness, in all compassion. For Jesus forgave each and every one of us, though we be prodigals, though we were the pig in the mire, though the dog in the vomit, we came out knowing all the wretched things we have done and are guilty of. And he was there to wash us clean, for though our sin be red as crimson, he's there to wash us white as wool. Put God first and live a God-centered life. Focusing always on God, praying and seeking God, praising him and giving thanks. Psalm 27, Psalm 23. Ah, the last five Psalms of the book of Psalms. And when you're struggling, go across to Psalm 91. It's the soldier's psalm, the soldier's prayer. Learn it and use it. The 91st Brigade used it in World War I and every single one of them came home. Not only did every one of them come home, every one of them came home without a wound nor a scratch. And they proclaim the greatness of God. May we speak as boldly as we ought and praise God and the testimony of Jesus in our lives. Be prepared for the battle ahead. Because this world don't want to be here in the name of Jesus no more. Stock is running out. The Bibles are going up in price online. And the ones that I used to get, they're having to import from elsewhere now, so they're getting harder to get. And the prices are increasing drastically on specific translations. Rarer ones are even more than double the price now. Make sure you have a physical copy while you can because they're looking to make it that you can't. Things are coming. We need to be prepared. Uh, pray for one another. Intercessory prayer. Build courage. Be courageous in Christ. Go on to the book of Timothy. And pray for one another. And pray for those in power and authority. Because they have much wickedness to do. So we pray. But they expose it. And it's those prayers that are heard. That you see that creepy, sleepy child sniffer. Consistently blurt out his mistakes. Same as when everyone heard. He said there's going to be a second pand. And the other word, emic. You understand. He blurted it out. Oh, when his press secretary said it was a plan and then the word demic. So you knew it was all planned out. You get it? And how many times have they told us in the media? Do you remember when they said 90% of those in the hospitals had had the certain something something? And then they said that only five to six percent that were in those hospitals hadn't had any of the certain something. People that had not conformed. They did not make the majority. They did not make much, but six percent.
Ah, uh, seek your father in heaven while he may yet be found. For this all coming to pass. Praise be Jesus. Praise be, O oh God. Give us strength and wisdom, understanding and courage. Oh, we pray for our spiritual armor to be prepared and to be ready for all that is to come. That we can stand steadfast, putting you first. Oh, keep our hearts humble and low and pure. Take away from us all weaknesses, all struggles and all strife. As we praise you and thank you for all you do for us. And I thank you for my arm and leg. And for the strength to endure my heart. Keep me strong and faithful. Collect me when it be your time, not my own. For I live but to preach the gospel, for that is my all. May we all stand faithful, looking to God, seeking His will. Hallowed be thy name, your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done in all in each and every one of our lives. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those that trespass and sin against us and deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation for yours is the power and all the glory In Jesus name amen stand steadfast boys and girls it's like a roller coaster there's going to be some big turns coming up real soon things are speeding up and each and every day, I'm seeing a lot of things happen. It's a lot of chaos and a lot of mayhem. I pray that the ministry continues and keeps growing. And I pray for the people I come into contact with through ministry. Uh, help Ali and Maka. Guide them in their health and their situations and their struggles and their strifes. Help the man that need to choose that he will start to believe and read the Bible. Help Nigel that he will study and get away from all temptations, from all addictions. Help Blacksy that he sobers up and starts to read and pray. Help Liam that he become faithful and that he does believe in thee and not just be hungry for money. Guide Darren to get him out of his situations and his hardships. Help him to get a proper place and to clean up his act. Help old Paul that he comes back to you as a prodigal for he said he fell away and I pray that you remove the wicked spirits that turn him that he can't touch a bible that they be rebuked and cast out in the name of Jesus and I pray that they can all find better shelter than the tents provided and they can find better comfort than the sleeping bags they can get better food than what I provide. Guide them and strengthen them, Father, that they come to you. Help them find a good church where they can get fellowship and grow in your will. May your light so shine and bring glory to others that they will see your greatness working through others. For Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father but through the Son. So may we all learn from Jesus and follow Him. Learn from Him. So study intently and diligently. Be joyous and at peace. Though we see the struggles of the earth, we know God is with us. Though we go through tribulation, be of good cheer. 
Jesus overcame the world. And when the time does come, with our heads on or off, may we continue praising God. Amen. Stay encouraged, brothers and sisters. There's much to come. God bless every one of you.